So I go to the bookstore and you see this book, How to Defend Yourself Against Alien Abduction. So I bought this book. I read this book. I heeded its advice. That's why I'm here now, all right? So just so you know. To write a book where if you do everything it says, aliens will not abduct you, you know? Somebody wrote this, a publisher bought the manuscript and it got marketed. And you know, what, what century is this? Oh, 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 don't get me started about 2012. It goes on and on and on. I get people, planet Nibiru, the Mayans, there's a black hole in the center of the galaxy, Earth's axis is gonna tip, sun's axis, it goes on. I don't know how bad the 2012 stuff is down here, but you go back up to the United States, people are, people are crazy, 2012 crazy. And it's all because the Mayans, their calendar sort of turns over in 2012. And so people are figuring that the Mayans really know astrophysics. Um, and they have some deep understanding of the fate of the Earth. And so they're combining all this. So first of all, there is no planet Nuburu. It's a fiction, fact one. Fact two, the Mayans did not even predict their own demise. <laughs> what confidence should we have that they will know the end of the Earth? On December 21st, 2012, the Earth, the Sun, and the center of the galaxy will come into perfect alignment. And we happen to know there's a supermassive black hole in the center of the galaxy. The people say, oh, the extra gravity is going to tip us on our axis, and that'll be the end of life as we know it. When you're scientifically literate, whether or not you even know if that's true, the first thing you should ask yourself is, how often does that align? Like, just, just how often? That should be your first thought, not run. <laughs> it should be how often, okay? That alignment happens every year, December 21st. <laughs> every, the websites don't tell you that. They're not wired for critical thinking. Solar activity, you read their sites. Oh, the solar maximum in 2012. First, it's scheduled for May 2013 not 2012. Second, it is the weakest solar maximum that we're gonna have that we've had for 400 years. If you're gonna worry about something, worry about the sun has been quiet lately. Not that the sun has been loud and active. Well, you say, well, how about that flare I read about? How about, well, that's because NASA has more spacecraft monitoring the sun today than ever before. So we just have better data. We have more vibrant images of when the sun burps up plasma and hurls it towards Earth. But just because you monitor it doesn't mean it's happening more often. People, again, that's a subtle point that you learn in your science class that often gets lost. Uh, it seemed to, 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 to calm down this year, but every August, there's what I call the Mars virus. The Mars virus. Your email box gets a note from a friend of yours who says, check this out. I just read that Mars is gonna be huge in the nighttime sky in the month of August. Well, back in 2003, Mars was in fact closer to Earth than it had been in 60,000 years. Yes, that red headline was true. But okay, I, I, I'm with you here. But you gotta ask the next natural question. How much closer is it than it has been in 60,000 years? And I ask you this question. First of all, which direction is west from here? Anybody know? I see arms pointing in different directions. This does not <laughs> bode well. You guys look pretty confident here. You're pointing your arm this way. Okay, this is west. This is, this, oh, let's pretend this is west, okay? <laughs> so here's what's going on there. You ready? I've never before been this close to New Zealand. Okay? <laughs> 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 
Yes, Mars was closer than in 60,000, but not by much, all right? But when we hear it's closest, everyone says it must therefore be big. And then this huge, in there is an article that talks about Mars being so bright, you would need sunglasses to see it at night. You could drive by the light of Mars. It didn't stop at Mars just a few months ago. Did you catch the stories about the supermoon? The su oh, biggest full moon in like a zillion years? Check it out. Okay, here's some data, all right? The moon has an elliptical orbit. Sometimes it's close, sometimes it's far. Other times it's in between, okay? So, so let's analogize the size of the moon on the sky to a pizza pie, okay? These are, these are exact same ratios. So, where am I here? So, if, our sm if the moon, when it's farthest from Earth, is the size of a seven-inch pizza, okay? Sorry, these are inches. I'm sorry, I come from a place where, like, they use inches, okay? So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> it doesn't matter what an inch is. There's seven of them, okay, for this example, okay? <laughs> I could have called them meters. This example will still hold. It's seven of them. How big would a average moon be? Seven and a half inches. How big would the largest moon of the month be? Eight inches. How big was the super moon? 8.00001 inches. That's why you have to ask, how much bigger? Have you, do this experiment for the next full moon, which is in a couple of weeks. Get a drinking straw. While the moon is looking large on the horizon, you know that full moon on the horizon effect, where it's nice and big? Take your drinking straw and look through the drinking straw at the full moon. You could fit three or four full moons inside the field of view of your drinking straw. The full moon is not big on the sky. Your brain makes it big, but it actually isn't. Check it out next time. I drew, here's an example of it, through a drinking straw. Now, this, this supermoon made it to the press, even space.com. Supermoon rises, biggest full moon in 18 years. They don't give the pizza analogy. Had they done so, the rest of this would have been irrelevant. It would have been just a waste of everybody's time. Even the NASA photographer was duped. He went to the Lincoln Memorial, watched the full moon rise, pulled out a 400 millimeter lens and got this picture. And they said, wow, look how big that, full, that super moon is. So all you need is a little Photoshop. And I say, well, that's the super moon. What would an average full moon look like? That, okay? <laughs> super moon, oops, we'll get there. Super moon. Super moon, average moon, there you go, super average. This is what they're making a th big thing about. There you go, okay? So once again, there's this sort of, there's an enumeracy. People don't know how to interpret numerical information and turn it into knowledge. 